Hello everyone, Lisa here. Today I am starting a new t-shirt quilt. It's going to be a collage style quilt and it's going to be a throw size. So I'm going to be using my 4 inch grid to plan and organize my quilt and make sure all of my pieces fit together. Thought I would bring you along and show you some of the things that I do while I am planning and sewing together a quilt top like this. Let's get started. As I start each new quilt, I like to review the notes that I made when I sat down with the client and we went over the details of their quilt. Those notes include things like the color of the backing, the color of the binding, and which logos that they want to include in the quilt and which ones they do not want to include. Sometimes I'll even mark the shirts with the logos that we're not using so that I make sure that I don't include them in their quilt. I'm going to keep all of this in mind as I cut apart my shirts. I like to make two stacks. The first being the logos that we're going to use and the second stack is the logos that they didn't want to include. Yet we're not going to discard those pieces yet. They contain lots of valuable material that we're going to use as puzzle pieces. A collage style quilt is much like a puzzle and so we're going to use all of those blank parts of those shirts as our puzzle pieces. Cutting apart the shirts is very easy and goes by pretty quick. If you'd like a more detailed explanation of what I'm doing here, you can find a video where I show you step by step of exactly how I do this. In my playlist, if you search Lisa Cape and Quilts, you'll find that video there. Again, this does go by pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of my shirts and we'll meet back when I'm finished. Here we are. All of our shirts have been cut apart. This is the stack of logos that we're going to include into our quilt. The thing I like to do next is to take this stack and divide it into three parts. I like to separate my logos between small, medium, and large small logos being something like a chest logo and then uh, the medium logos would be something that is long yet skinny and then the large logos of course would be the larger pieces once you have your three stacks of shirts that's when I like to come in and start designing I use uh, the four inch grid for my collage style quilts with the four inches, you can see all sorts of different variations and different ways that you can cut your block. So with four inches, it gives you a lot of variation in your block size. And so that's why I really like it. I also like to use um, cutting rulers like this is a four and a half inch cutting ruler that is perfect for cutting chest logos out. And it speeds in the process of cutting out your blocks. And so um, rulers like this really help. Once I have my three stacks, I like to start with the large shirts first, or the large logos. Those are the ones that I want to make sure get put down on my grid first so that they fit into the quilt. And then we can go from there, each size down. The smaller logos being the ones that we fill in empty spaces with. The way this grid works is each one of these squares represents a finished four inch piece. And so let's say we have a block where we're going to cut it eight inches across and eight inches down. Keep in mind, we need to add a seam allowance. So for this eight inch block, we're actually gonna cut this at eight and a half by eight and a half. And that includes our seam allowance. When it's finished, it'll actually measure eight inches by eight inches. So keep that in mind when you're designing, when you cut out your piece, add your seam allowance. Don't forget that. <laughs> Once I fill in all of these empty blocks, then I know I've acquired the size of the quilt that the client has ordered. This grid set has five different sizes. There's a crib size, a throw size, twin, full, and queen. And so uh, for me, it really aids. I don't have to do a lot of math in my head. 
and I can sit down with all of my pieces and play with the design until I get the look that I am pleased and happy with. I'm going to go ahead and start organizing my logos and we're going to start stabilizing. Now keep in mind also that unlike the block style quilt where we did um, a whole series on, I do not pre-cut any stabilizer for this style quilt. A lot of stabilizer would get wasted if we did that. And so after I have each of my sizes divided from one another, I will stabilize my shirts individually, shirt by shirt, and I will cut my stabilizer a few inches larger than my logo to ensure that stabilizer covers my whole block when it's cut out. That saves a lot of stabilizer to do it that way. Let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to get busy separating, and we'll meet back. I have my stacks of shirts separated into small, medium, and large. We're going to start with the large ones first. I have my stabilizer, some scissors, my iron. My iron is set to the highest cotton setting. And I have a scrap piece of material, it's just uh, white muslin, that I like to use as a pressing cloth when I'm uh, ironing my stabilizer to the back of the shirt. This is very simple. Uh, again, I cut my stabilizer a few inches larger than my logo. So I'll lay my shirt out, take my scissors, And you can see through the stabilizer, just like that. I will cut out a piece, again, that's a few inches bigger all the way around, all four sides of my logo. Just like that. And I will cut this off. And believe me, none of this gets wasted. This goes into a box that I save, and I use these pieces to do smaller logos, or even on my embroidery work, so I save all of my little pieces. We flip our shirt to the back side. And just arrange it so that it's nice and flat. We're not stretching anything out, we're just getting all of the wrinkles out and we're ready to press our stabilizer onto our shirt. I lay the bumpy side which is the adhesive to the shirt and so this side is nice and smooth. Make sure you check that before you fuse anything together. And then I take my pressing cloth and just put it right over top, smooth everything in place, and I press this at first with a dry iron to uh, just lightly fuse that in place, and then I'll turn the steam on high, and we are just fusing that stabilizer, getting a nice, good, solid bond with the shirt. I do think I have a video on using this stabilizer also in my playlist if you would like a more detailed instruction on how to do that. And this is it. I'm going to go through each one of my stacks and stabilize my shirts just like this, cutting the stabilizer custom to each logo and saving all of my bits and pieces that I have left. Once all of our shirts are stabilized, then we're going to start cutting. We have all of our t-shirts stabilized at this point. 
I have already marked the center point with a ruler both vertically and horizontally through my logo and that gives me some reference points so I can cut out my logo. I just used a chalk marker and this does wash out of your quilt. I'll also be using this Mark Be Gone on the lighter shirts. Again, I've already marked my center and we're ready to start cutting this, this logo out. What you'll notice on my cutting mat is that I have all of my measurements permanently written on my mat. You may not want to do that. I make t-shirt quilts daily. This is what I do. <laughs> and so I use these measurements all the time. I find them useful. I pick a center reference mark and then uh, like these are my four and a half, six and a half, eight and a half, ten and a half, twelve and a half, fourteen and a half, and so on. And so I can just line up the center mark on my mat and I know that very quickly this is my four and a half mark, this is my ten and a half mark, and I'm not counting out all these squares for every single logo that I'm cutting out. This comes in really handy if you don't have a lot of different kinds of cutting rulers to use. And really all you need is your mat and a straight edge ruler. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and line up the center mark here. And... I'm sorry, you cannot see it, but down here I'm going to line the mark up on that line as well. That way you can see my measurements. Now remember, we're doing a 4 inch grid, so we want to cut out our blocks divisible by 4. This is one of the larger blocks we're going to work with. And so I'm thinking... Uh, 16 inches long would give me a block like this. 20 inches long might be too long for this block. So let's go ahead and cut the, the length from top to bottom of this block at 16 and a half inches long. Where is my rotary cutter? Here it is. <laughs> Let me see if I can move you so that you can see this whole shirt without creating too much turmoil. Sorry, that might be better though. Here is our 16 and a half inch mark. We're going to line that up and hold everything really secure in place. And there goes the top of the shirt. And then we're going to come down right here at 16 and a half. And we're going to cut the bottom of the shirt off. Now this larger piece, I'm going to save this because this is all material that can be used in different parts of the quilt. Now we can flip our shirt. This is our center mark. It might be really faint. I'm hoping you can see that. We're going to line it up to the center mark on our cutting mat. The top of this shirt will line up with this line completely straight. The straighter your cuts, the more precise everything is going to come together. Let's get it over just a little bit. Now again, divisible by four, we have, this would be the 12 inch mark, and that's going to cut off some of our logo. That would be 12 inches, so that would be gone. At 16, that gives us some space on the right side of the logo and on the left side of the logo. So let's make this block 16 by 16. 
Remembering our seam allowance, we're cutting at 16 and a half by 16 and a half. All right, there is our pretty little t-shirt block. What I like to do next, because we are dealing with all different sizes with our blocks, is I like to go ahead and write on a little slip of paper, 16, and a half, 16 by 16, and I'm gonna actually pin this to my block. That way, later on down the road, if I decide that I want to move this piece, I don't have to keep remeasuring it to remember what size it is. So this one is 16 by 16. At this point, I like to go ahead and start... Oh, let me see a little pencil here. I like to go ahead and start marking my template. <laughs> You can see it's been a long day. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can see this better. We're starting off with a clean slate. Remember how I said each one of these blocks represents four inches finished. I'd like to place this block somewhere in the middle of this quilt. About right here would be good. So I'm going to mark a space that would represent 16 by 16. That's four blocks over and four blocks down. Now one way this grid really comes in handy, I have a friend on Facebook and she sent me a picture of her quilt that she's laying out and she's using her floor and her quilt looks so amazing I'm really super excited for her she said her cat comes in and messes with all the pieces <laughs> so uh, these grids if you don't have space to lay out your quilt and leave it there while you're working on it or you don't have a design wall, these grids really come in handy because you can just make a stack of uh, t-shirt blocks and do all of your design work here and you don't have cats or dogs or kids coming in and moving everything around and you're not occupying a room in your house with your quilt while it's a work in progress. All right, just like that, there is this block here. Now I'm going to go ahead and pin this up on the wall and we'll cut out one more shirt together. Our next shirt, I've already marked our center reference lines in both directions. I'm just going to fold this sleeve up just like that so I can see the measurements on my mat. Lining up the center point directly on the line, both at the top and the bottom. We're going to figure out how long to cut this block. Let's see. This here would be 12 and a half. Where are we? There we go. And that just does cut off the bottom of the word piggly. We could come in at 16 and a half. That would be this here up at the top and right there. And that would make a nice long block and I, I like that. So let's go ahead and cut this one 16 and a half inches long. Again, we're saving this piece because we might use it down, down the road later. 
We're going to cut the top of the shirt off at 16 and a half. And I might get in your way for a second. There we go. Now we're going to flip and we're going to cut the sides of the shirt off. Again, we're ma matching the raw edge to um, any of these horizontal lines here. But we're going to line it up with the center and make sure everything is nice and straight. Just like that. At this point, we can decide how wide we want our shirt. This would be eight and a half, and you see we're going into the logo here. And our next step up would be 12, because we're using four inches as our uh, measurement guide. This would be 12, and I like that a lot. So let's, let's cut the width at 12 and a half inches. And I like trying to get a lot of variety in the size of my blocks when I'm doing a collage style quilt. Sometimes the shirts you're working with just doesn't allow for it. You'll have a ton of 16 by 16 or 8 by 12s and the logos just don't permit a ton of variety. But whenever possible, I do like to change up the measurements. So like our last block was 16 by 16. This one is 12 by 16, 12 by 16. We're going to pin this to the shirt. So if it moves around, we always know what the measurement is. And then now comes the fun part. I'm going to go ahead and figure out where I want this to be. I know that I have two other pink shirts that I'm going to have to figure out where they go. So I want to make sure that I'm not placing those shirts right next to each other. I like to spread the colors out. Let's see. I think let's start here. So it was 12 inches wide. That's one, two, three, and 16 inches tall. That's four blocks up. So we can color in this space here. And again, this is just what I do. This helps me, uh, the different colors help me visualize what shirt is what shirt. Just at a quick glance, I can figure out where everything is. So there's our quilt so far. I am going to turn the cameras off, cut a bunch of shirts, and do some arranging. And we will finish today's video up at the end of my work day, and we'll meet back and we'll see where we are. Here we are. It is the end of my work day, and this is how far we've gotten. All of these colored squares represent shirt blocks. The blocks with the little black dots represent a white square block. The only thing that I need to fill in now would be these two yellow pieces, these pieces here, and then everything is filled in. I can already see by looking at this diagram that this is going to be a partial seam right here, so I look forward to showing you how to do this. And then there may be another one in there somewhere. Like I'm thinking somewhere in here is going to be some partial seams when we join sections together. So I look forward to uh, showing how I do that. Tomorrow morning I'll be out here first thing and I will figure out which colors go in these blocks here. I'll cut my two yellow pieces and add them up on the wall and then I'm ready to start sewing. So I will bring you along for that process. I'll show you how I join sections together, how I determine what goes together in what order and we'll tackle the partial seams. I look forward to seeing you then. I'm going to move you over and uh, just give you a good screenshot of the design wall and what the quilt looks like so far. 
this is it. This is everything up on the wall and a preview of what the quilt's going to look like. I thank you for joining me today and stay tuned for part two of this little mini series. Bye.